Hello everybody and welcome back to another video here on the channel and yes it has been a while it's been probably about a week since I uploaded my last video on installing Tiny7 on a uh, USB drive and it's just been you know one of those weeks again where I've been you know super busy but I have you know finally found some time today to make this video and this is a video that I've been really interested in making because of the uh, operating system that we're going to be taking a, a look at today which sounds really interesting. We're going to be taking a look at something called Sigma OS. And if you've never heard of this, what Sigma OS essentially is, is a modified um, version of Longhorn Build 4074, um, which is you know highly regarded as one of the most popular Longhorn builds. And if you have not seen, or if you did see my uh, history of... Uh, Longhorn development, you would kind of know a little bit about the Longhorn uh, development process and what actually, you know, went into that and how uh, long that it took for them to, you know, make uh, what became Windows Vista. Um, but one of the major problems with a lot of the earlier Longhorn builds is they were very unstable. And uh, because of that, a lot of the features that the um, uh, Microsoft developers had implemented, um, they weren't able to be uh, fully used in these builds. Um, and people that they would send them out to like actually test them, they wouldn't be able to really uh, experience Longhorn the way it was meant to be experienced. And what they ended up doing, you know, because of this and because of a lot of other features, is they ended up totally resetting the Longhorn uh, development process, which I talk about in my uh, History of Windows Vista and Longhorn uh, Development two-part video series. Which, if you're interested, you can find out uh, by clicking on the top right uh, card on your video screen right now, and it'll take you to that video. But what we're going to focus on today is a modified version of Longhorn Build 4074 that was made by a group of, I believe they were Polish, uh, a group of uh, Polish developers. And they were actually able to uh, fix a lot of the unstable things that made 4074... Uh, you know very buggy and crashed a lot as I actually tried to make a video on 4074 a couple of years ago but I wasn't able to get a lot of the uh, cool features working one of the things was an early version of Windows era uh, 4074 was actually one of the first builds to uh, include a, a fully working version of the Windows Aero engine or, or the desktop window manager. It was called something else at this time, but it would eventually become the engine that would power the Windows Aero uh, interface. And I could not get it working no matter what I did. So I eventually kind of scrapped that whole video project and kind of put it on hold for a while. Um, and here we are like two or three years later taking a look at Sigma OS. So we're just going to uh, power this thing on and see what this is all about. So we're going to start Sigma OS up here. I do think that the uh, installation process and everything is, is very similar to Longhorn. They haven't really changed much and they don't really need to change much. So we did hang uh, on the boot screen for just a little bit. It, it looked like that it was like not working or something. but. It did go right into the installation, and this already looks way different than any other Windows Longhorn installation that I've seen. Um, you see we have the codename Longhorn logo down here, and the default language is English, uh, interestingly enough, even though th that this was made by uh, a group of Polish developers. Um, so we're going to click on install now. Um, and it's going to go through the standard, you know, th this right here is the standard uh, Windows setup. There's nothing really different about this. Um, I, I do believe that, yeah, they've actually been able to change the example sticker. This is kind of funny. Um, they've changed, this is the actual product key for the build right here, which is, you know, very convenient. So all, all you have to do is just kind of, you know, copy this. Do we have to set the BIOS state on this? I'm not even sure, but we're gonna find out and see. Um, if they've changed that or not, I assume that they would have because you know th I think this was modified in like 2010 uh, is is one that these people made this. So we'll we'll see if they've changed like the whole bio state thing. Uh, so we'll call this Sigma OS, and we're gonna choose. I've made a 20 gig hard drive, which is on disk zero. It's going to make the default administrator account. It looks like it's already found us. It's put us in the uh, Pacific time zone. And yeah, there we go, uh, it's, you know, collecting and copying information. Um, so it looks like we're, you know, pretty much 
pretty much uh, good here. So I'm just going to, you know, let this run. I'll come back if anything interesting happens. Um, but so far, it looks pretty promising. All right, so we've just finished up, and it's uh, letting us know that it's going to reboot uh, the computer. It's, for some reason, gone back to the installation, like the first part of the installation screen. Um, I guess it was just there for a second. As you can see, it already rebooted. And we are at the codename Longhorn boot screen. So you can see already that at the uh, bottom right, it has changed the, well, I mean, now it's gone, but it changed the uh, uh, watermark to say uh, Sigma OS. It now says Windows Longhorn and like Sigma OS 3.0. So it, it also asks us to go through the found new hardware wizard for uh, the audio driver. And one of the things that I noticed is that the authors have actually put um, all of the VMware tools drivers on the hard drive, they're already installed, so you don't have to insert a CD or anything like that. You just, uh, it's like actually already set in there, so you just uh, ha have to choose the audio driver out of the folder, and it'll automatically find it. And from what I remember about uh, 4074, is that, and a lot of the other Longhorn builds, is that audio is a major issue, and that, you know, getting it to work in these builds can be a big issue. Now, it is gonna say that the driver package is not compatible, we're not gonna worry about that, but we're going to uh, install it anyway, so we're going to click overwrite the newer file, uh, we're just gonna do it anyway, to see if we can actually get audio, um, which would be a, you know, a great thing, as a lot of the, um, well, a lot of the issues I've had with Longhorn, I'm not sure if other people have had this, is the Arrow uh, theme, trying to get it to work, particularly in this build, and uh, trying to get audio working, and I was not able to ever do that uh, either. So you can see it's going to again go through for base system device. I, I want to say that these graphics are new also, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure if these were... Um, the same in the original build. All right, and we are back, and I did have to actually create two separate virtual machines as I was having some issues with uh, the first one. Um, I'm not really gonna get into you know too much detail. It's not really you know that important. But the main thing that I had to do um, because I was able to to finally get sound and arrow working. Sound wasn't a big deal at all because you know it, it just works fine uh, in this you know uh, Sigma OS modification. Um, arrow was supposed to work out of the box but the reason why it didn't is because I did not set my um, hardware compatibility in VMware um, back a couple of versions. Now the author says that he, uh, he has uh, supported VMware 6 or VMware 9. Um, and I, I'm using VMware 11, so I had to set mine back, and I, I just set it all the way back to VMware 6, and it seems to work perfectly fine. And you know how that you do that, if you're not aware, is uh, when you're um, uh, creating the uh, virtual machine, it will actually ask you if you choose the uh, custom option, it'll actually ask you what uh, hardware version that you want. And you know if you're going to try out Sigma OS, I would uh, highly recommend it change that. Um, to, you know, back to 6.0 uh, or you know 7.0, and that's going to give you better results when you're trying to uh, run Arrow. So uh, we're just going to uh, log in here. I'm just going to press Control Alt and Delete or Insert uh, to send it to the VM, and we're going to log in here. And I'm going to show you that sound works. So you can see that we have sound working perfectly fine. They've actually changed the uh, login sound to that. Uh, I'm not sure if that sound was ever officially used in any Longhorn build. I think that they always use the the, uh, the XP sounds, um, but somehow, somewhere, that sound uh, came about, and people associated with, uh, associated with Windows Longhorn. Um, so they've you know put that in here. Uh, and you know it sounds you know pretty nice. A lot of people actually prefer that sound over the uh, over the uh, XP one, at, at least when they're taking a look at Longhorn builds. Um, but you can see here that we've got a little bit of transparency going on. We can see uh, the actual desktop wallpaper behind um, the uh, Longhorn sidebar here and on the taskbar as well. Um, and if we go to open up Windows, so let's say my documents. You can see that it just kind of does that nice pop-out animation. I'll just do that again for you guys. I can actually just run it from the desktop here. 
but yeah, you can see that, you know, that is what Arrow was um, back in, you know, 2003, 2004 time frame. This was kind of the, the first glimpse of, um, of what would become Windows Arrow. Now, yeah, this isn't really uh, transparent at all on this window, but, you know, you can kind of see that there's some uh, window shadowing going on here. Um, and there is this whole kind of like... Uh, like uh, animation sort of like aspect to it where every window that you open up has this sort of like pop-up fold down type animation now some of them you can see like the uh, run command here um, this title bar up here is actually arrow glass transparent um, well I mean of course it's not called arrow yet at this time but yeah you know you can see that here we will run Winver you can see that it does that same pop out uh, thing and and yeah, so you know it looks you know pretty nice, but I mean that is sort of the the main feature um, of Longhorn that is very difficult to get working and something that Sigma OS makes incredibly easy. All you have to do is again set your hardware uh, configuration back. Now, I've heard some people they've been able to do that with 4074. You know, you, they've been able to set um, their hardware version back. Um, to you know uh, VMware 6 or VMware 7 and it would work for me for whatever reason it, it wouldn't work and I'm not really sure why I just could never get it to work uh, on my uh, like on my computer um, I actually tried it on a couple different machines to see if it was something wrong with my host computer but you know it was, was something weird I must have been doing something wrong I don't know but Sigma OS works perfectly fine, so you know they definitely live up to the whole like out of box uh, support for DWM. You don't have to install any drivers, or the drivers you, you do have to install are already on the hard drive, and it's as simple as you know uh, browsing the hard drive to that file and getting it. So it's it, it's super easy, and I have to say that the whole uh, Arrow Glass, I keep saying Arrow Glass, but I mean the whole desktop composition engine. Um, looks really nice we're actually able to you know uh, take a look at it but it, it's you know pretty cool to see and this would have been very cool for my uh, uh, history of Windows Longhorn uh, development video series is to actually you know show this in there um, because yeah this very well could have been Windows Vista you know Windows Vista or it may have had like a whole different name maybe it would have been Longhorn if they had gone through with that, you know, 2004, 2005 date that they were planning on actually, uh, you know, uh, having this released. Um, but this is what it, you know, it could have been. And, you know, if this is what Vista was, you know, who knows what Windows could be like today. It could be something totally different than, than you know, what we have. So um, that is essentially going to wrap it up for this video. I want to give a huge thanks uh, to this author for, you know, uh, making this or this uh, you know group of people for uh, creating Sigma OS and allowing us to take a look at uh, basically Windows Longhorn as it should have been uh, is I guess a good way to put it. There's a lot of more features in this that I'm not you know that I'm not touching on in this video. Um, there's a lot of uh, things that they've added, but um, I might do a whole separate video on that. Uh, this video was kind of just the main, uh, you know, getting it installed, seeing what it was like, and a brief little overview. Uh, the main thing being, of course, the desktop composition engine. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to give it a like, uh, subscribe for more videos like this, and leave a comment down below uh, what you think of the desktop composition engine, and you know, would you actually use? Uh, a version of Windows that had something like this in it, you know, if Windows would have been, you know, like if they had changed their whole view uh, and made Windows, you know, something like this, would you be uh, interested or be, like, you know, okay with using something like that? Uh, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, and as always, guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you uh, in my next video.